Fee, Fi, Fo, Fum. Bim. Yes. There are many competitors on the market, including the plugins for the originally non BIM software. But the two main competitors on the worldwide architectural market are, as we know, Revit and Archicad. For more than 12 years, my team and I have worked on some of the world's geometrically most complex projects. and we helped de develop and generate all the details until the very last nut and bolt and get everything ready for production and construction. This includes a $2 billion project about which I will talk in just a moment. So, in this beamified world, do you want to know if we mostly used Revit, Archicad, maybe both, or maybe even some of the other BIM programs? Stay tuned because the answer is coming right after the commercial break. Just joking, no ads on this channel. And the answer is, Drum roll, please. None. On all of these projects, we did not use any of the software known as BIM software. From the design until the production of the assembly ready elements, we used. Drum roll. No? Okay. Rhino. BIM introduces a lot of confusion into people's busy lives. BIM is all about cooperation and automation, and that's all fine, but in practice, that means a very simple thing. For a long time we designed by only modeling geometry, we did that in 2D using AutoCAD and then we slowly moved to 3D. And now we are adding a lot of metadata to that geometry, a lot of attributes, properties, pick your term. An Excel table attached to every wall and window. And then we can automate scheduling, Gantt charts, quantity takeoffs, bill of quantities, pick your term. Or even automatically generate sections and plans. And that's it, it used to be only geometry, now it's geometry plus some data attached to it. And you do not need BIM software to do that. You can add data to your geometry easily in other software as well. So how do we do it? Well, first of all, we take simple inputs and generate most of the geometry parametrically. We write the code, click the button and watch the geometry appear. So we do this for static analysis as well, but that's described in separate videos. So we generate everything until the very micrometer. I have a lot of emails that I can show where it says something like, we detected that some holes are moved by 0.1 millimeters. Please revise and resubmit the affected aluminum profiles. So, if we code the generation of geometry, coding the attributes is the easy part. We can give any attribute to any element, and those attributes do not only describe the geometry, but give information about the construction site, assembly, sequencing, and so on. So once we create the geometry, then we can generate all those Excel sheets, tables, quantities, etc. automatically, at the click of a button. It's very easy to extract the information once you have it. Those are the easiest algorithms actually, nothing in comparison to the generation of geometry. All those sheets and tables can be used to order material and calculate the exact costs, and then we go into the production. So at the click of a button we can generate 2D drawings, which we dislike, or what we prefer is to generate G-code, so CNC files and those files can go automatically to the machine. All elements are numbered, they're ready for assembly, done. In this entire process, there was not a single moment where we said, oh, if we had Revit or Archicad, we could... No, simply no need. My Tiger Kung Fu is better than yours. I don't think you're good enough. So let us not misunderstand each other. Am I saying that you do not need Revit or Archicad? Absolutely not. Some of my best friends are avid Archicad users and they produce the same detailed models using that software. I'm saying that we do not need it and I'm presenting a case to show it is possible to work on very high profile, very complex and some of the largest projects in the world without using some of the software widely considered a must. We are working on several projects at the moment and one of them is very large and you have probably seen it in the press, it costs nearly two billion dollars and it... I cannot say which project it is, that's the NDA world we live in today, but I can give you some numbers just to give you a feel about the size and the detail in order to make the point I'm trying to make. So let's hypothesize there is a huge steel structure and that construction holds a secondary structure and that holds a tertiary structure and that holds some very sophisticated panels. And the whole thing is extremely precise with some crazy demand for tolerance that goes below 0.5 millimeters. Now, we are talking about roughly 30,000 metal profiles, excluding the primary structure, and their lengths vary from 3 to 6 meters. 
and the structure has hundreds of different types of custom-made connections between those elements and they result in a lot of cuts, pockets, drills, threads, making each profile unique. When a machine performs a cut, mill, drill or a thread drill, we call that a work in the CNC language. So the number of works per single profile varies from 120 to 200, but let's say it averages to 150. This makes every profile not only unique, but also looking like a Swiss cheese. So these numbers put us at uh, 4.5 million works for the secondary and tertiary structure. And after we have generated everything in 3D, automatically, at the click of a button, we export each profile into different file formats like 3DM or STP and into a CNC file. And the CNC file is basically a text file containing a lot of specifics about the machine at the beginning and then uh, about all of the 150 works on average for that profile. And every work is precisely defined. It tells the machine what tool to use, what type of work it is, rectangular pocket, circular pocket, drill, thread, etc. It tells the tool where to start, where to pause, what steps to make in which to progress, etc. etc. So the description of just a single work can contain tens of lines of text, especially if it is a complex polygonal mill like the name that is engraved on each profile. And every profile will have all attributes as well in 3D, informing us about the material, cross-section, length, coating, parameters regarding the static analysis, etc. And all of those hundreds of connections that I mentioned are all full of attributes. Some of the connections have, let's say, several steel plates bolted and welded together. So every screw and bolt and every metal plate will have their own attributes, and then the larger grouping will have their own attributes as well, and so on and so on. And now I'll give you a couple of seconds to comprehend all of those millions of pieces of data contained in such a model. And now let's go back to the beginning. We start with some very basic input data, some lines, some surfaces, and then we model everything with our keyboard and not with our mouse. We export all the Excel sheets we need for ordering of materials, we generate packaging data for containers, installation plans, every little screw and metal plate is accounted for, and the elements are all numbered, ordered, the machine cuts them and the humans assemble them. Now I know we do not work a lot on standard architectural projects, your everyday apartment buildings, schools, hospitals. We mostly work on airports, entertainment centers, large and geometrically complex structures. But still, everything I described is easily transferable to standard buildings as well. The only thing that I find easy to do in a BIM program is the creation of plans and sections automatically. For these kind of things, we usually have to make our own algorithms or simply do that semi-manually. But our practice showed that we do not need those and that we need 2D less and less. The way we create digital twins, we go from 3D to 3D. No paper needed and very few humans needed. Structures with 30,000 unique profiles or roofs with tens of thousands of unique concrete panels with unique reinforcement can all be generated by a couple of people. So, there is something to think about, I guess. Until next time, stay free. If you want to create your own cool plugins like Boronax or any of our other plugins, I can teach you how to do it. And if you go to proarchitect.teachable.com, you will see already some of the courses there, the Rhino Developer C++ course or the Rhino Developer C Sharp course. Uh, you will get small C++ and C Sharp basic courses with them. And in the future, you will get to see a lot of other courses on similar subjects. You can enroll the, in the course. You can see all the explanation here. You have more than 10 or 11 hours of video. The first couple of videos are free where you can check out if you are able to download the software and create your own plugin and afterwards there is a lots of lots of uh, videos explaining all the basics of the development for Rhino so that you can create your own plugin.